so I guess I'm the counterpoint here. Uh, my name is Doug Turnbull. I'm, I just moved back to Ithaca um, to start a faculty position at IC. And, uh, and so, but I grew up here. I was born and raised here. And I grew up as part of the music scene here, which I love dearly. So my research throughout grad school was to develop the world's greatest music discovery experience ever. Um, a music discovery engine is a technology that helps connect music musicians with fans. Um, and it, it works in a local capacity as well. Um, so that's the counterpoint, um, and that's what I'm working on now. There are, as we saw in the previous talk, there's lots of music discovery engines out there. Pandora, Last.fm, iTunes are some of the most common ones, but there's dozens of other companies that are looking into this. And one thing they all have in common is they really focus on music by similarity. So you like an artist, you want to find similar music. What I do is I uh, use what's called, uh, <laughs> what I want to do is let the, music, the users discover music using descriptive terms like bluegrass and sad and fun and that sort of thing. So it works much like Google does. Uh, Google, what they do is they go out and index all of the web pages in the world. And what they do is they look up a document and they sort of count the number of times each word appears in that document. So when a query comes along, when they want to find web pages about Apple Crisp, they look for the documents that have both the word Apple in it and the word Crisp in it. So that's sort of the, 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 an easy thing to do for Google. For music, it's a little bit different because we have um, an apples to oranges problem where, go, um, the, uh, where we have uh, text terms on one side and, and acoustic signals on the other. So how do we label music with these descriptive terms like angry, blue gas, and calm so that we can come up with a playlist of music um, like we do have on things like Pandora? So the, the, the golden standard is a survey. Pandora actually pays people to sit there and hand label music. Um, and, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a lot of other sources of data, web pages, social tags, video games, preference information, audio content, and image content to sort of label music. So for example, I built this game in grad school called Heard It, which is on Facebook. You can play it now. And it's a massive multiplayer social game where you come to the site, you pick a game, you pick a genre of music you like, and you're connected with a herd of people. And they pick things that describe the music they're listening to, and they get points based on the agreement between all the people. And so this gives us very useful data for free, which is a nice thing. And we use that to train um, the, the core technology, which is the machine listening system, which looks like that. And so you have, um, you basically train a computer to analyze the waveform and, and automatically output the labels that um, are indicative of the kind of music that is being played. So that's, that's what I spent six years doing. And, um, and it can do things like output these labels. So here's a, a brand new song from a local artist named Snoop Dogg. And, um, <laughs> and it, it automatically figures out that this is dance, poppy, hip hop music that is arousing and exciting and so on. So that's how we can label the music. And once we've labeled it, um, you know, we can build up this big index. And like I said, we'd, we'd really like to have the Pandora tags, but we just don't have enough money to index the millions of songs that are out there on the internet. So what we do instead is we take all of these other sources of data and we find a way to combine them using machine learning or artificial intelligence and we can sort of fill in the missing, the missing points. So that's sort of where the research is um, and it's a very fun and interesting problem that I can spend hours to you talking about. Uh, so this, this is, is where we're headed and we end up with one system where we index music with words and then somebody can come to our site just like you'd go to Google and type in some descriptive terms like bluegrass and then we get a playlist of music out. And of course you can add uh, components to this like you want to just listen to local music. Um, this is a, an example of a, of a music discovery engine that uh, I built with some students last year called Meerkat. The idea is it's, it's very simple to use. You just type in terms you want and all of a sudden music will start playing. And what the interface does is it allows you to sort of see the current songs as well as the future songs. Um, and it also sort of shows you some of the relevant tags associated with this music. So let's say I like bluegrass, but I want to hear bluegrass specifically with mandolin. What it's going to do is it's going to update the songs in the future so that it reflects the semantics of having bluegrass and mandolin music. And that's sort of how the experience works. And it's much better than sort of the Pandora experience where you do thumbs up or thumbs down or just add another artist to sort of Thing. And you can do this in conjunction with all that, but this is really f a focused uh, experiment. So my goal here uh, is 
to get settled in Ithaca, <laughs> bounce some ideas around, and then uh, sort of build the best music ex discovery experience. I'm working with some folks at IC in the music school to uh, focus on local music recommendation, which is sort of like a Craigslist meets Pandora thing. Um, if you want to learn more, I have tons of papers and demos on my website. Uh, it's sort of in transition right now, so Google's the best way to get in touch with me. Um, and that's, that's all I had to say, so thanks for your time.